Hi, this is Dave at AFX Search, a licensed investigator. So you're a business, you sell things online or in person, and occasionally you may run across credit card fraud. Somebody purchases something from you, and later on there's a claim that the credit card that was used was stolen or fraudulent, and the goods were never received. So how do you investigate that? Well, we start by looking at the two points on that transaction. There's two points of contact. One is the purchase when the order came in and one is the delivery when the product went out. Sometimes it happens at the same time. Sometimes they're two separate events. If the order comes in online, start with the IP address. IP address at its face may seem like a dead end if it's AOL or something where it's a, it's a large ISP. We can dig down deeper and find out maybe the time and location of where that came from. Many cases, offshore fraudsters will try to use an onshore provider so it doesn't raise red flags, but we're going to start with that. If it was an in-person purchase with a stolen credit card, uh, we're going to review uh, maybe surveillance tapes and also look at things like other stores in the area. Was that credit card used elsewhere? Are there outside surveillance? Are there uh, uh, license plate readers, things to find out what the, the history was. Uh, that may also help you with uh, shoplifting. Sometimes shoplifters will steal items but also purchase something uh, at the same time in your store or elsewhere. We're going to look at email addresses. Uh, fraudsters who buy online will use a, a fake or throwaway email address, but that's not the end of the story. In order to log into that email, they may have used an unobscured IP address. They may have hidden their IP or used a proxy when they bought the pro uh, item from you, but when they created their email address or accessed it, they may have used their actual IP address from their home, and we can track it down that way. Their email IP may be different. Phone accounts, they're going to put a phone number on the order. If it's a fake phone number, uh, we'll look to see if that fake phone number was used elsewhere, if there's any history to it. They may have generated a Vonage number uh, or one of the Magic Jack numbers, and we can track that down, what IP went there, even what credit card was used to pay for that Vonage number. Um, when you send it out, we're going to take a look at the address to see if that drop ship address originally uh, was something that was common in other frauds. Uh, and if it was eventually shipped elsewhere, we'll look at that address. We'll look at activity in that area. There may be a connection to the address that may not be um, you know, obvious at first glance. Uh, if there's phone calls in, look, if the person orders online, they may have called later to change the address on that order. They may have called ahead of time to get product information or to, to test and ping your uh, system to see where the vulnerabilities are to ask are you gonna you know ship to a different address so we're gonna check your phone logs and phone records to see if there's common elements there's other frauds in other companies that are the same we can cross reference your fraud with phone numbers IP addresses and emails to track down and triangulate to that fraudster and maybe get the merchandise back we're gonna start also with the defrauded car cardholder uh, that defrauded cardholder whose card was stolen will probably have other charges on their card that you won't know about. Once we talk to them, we can find out where else their card was used. Again, we can triangulate. If it was all in your local market area, we're going to find that it may have been a, uh, a theft of that card locally. If there's thefts elsewhere, we're going to triangulate what type of products. Are they all the same kind of products? Were they shipped to the same area? We can match up those products. If your product was stolen and three other products were stolen that were different, we can see if there's somebody on eBay selling those four products and maybe track the person down that way. We, when we interview that cardholder, we'll find out what else is charged. It also determine the validity of the chargeback to make sure it wasn't just a legitimate uh, cardholder saying, hey, my card was stolen to get something for free. So we'll verify that as well. Credit card fraud, you don't want to leave it the chance. Even though it may be uh, read it off to a loss, you're going to have a chargeback fee and your merchant account will now have a ding on it. So if you get too many of those, you may pay a higher rate or even have a reserve account situation with your company. So investigate credit card fraud. Worst case scenario, if you find out who it is, even if it's a cardholder, you can go through the small claims process uh, to make sure that your credit card account does not end up with dings on it that puts it at risk. If you have more questions, you can reach us at our website, afxsearch.com.